Congressman Paul Ryan uh, is with me now here as well. And you came to talk about Obamacare subsidies in the Supreme Court. We'll get that in a moment. But you were just remarking during the commercial break that normally you would not have, what, 12, 15 live TV cameras here unless the president elevated this. Uh, look, I think the president made a huge mistake uh, Why? by dissing the prime minister of Israel, one of our greatest allies, um, by having Democrats, you know, boycott this. What he has done is he has elevated the critique of his foreign policy to a level that people are now paying attention to his criticism. So I think the president made a huge mistake here. Look, I'm one of the critics of the Obama foreign policy, and we should always want to hear from our closest allies about their views on things. We should be welcoming the prime minister of Israel here, no matter whether you've, you're going to be criticized for your foreign policy or not. And I think the president made a huge mistake by making this such a big show, so it elevates the critique of his foreign policy, which many of us have been making. Now more people get to hear that. I think on the outside, Americans are trying to figure out what this means today. Yeah. And Susan Rice called it uh, destructive to the relationship. Uh, the president backed away from that last night, called it a distraction. So w what is it? What, what is today all about? Where are we after this speech? Here's our concern. What we don't want to see is a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. We don't want to see conflict. But we believe, based on the leaks we're getting from the administration, that they're in the midst of getting a really bad deal with Iran, which make those things more likely. And so Republicans and Democrats here in Congress are very worried and very concerned about the president's foreign policies. If he gets this wrong, and, and we fear that he is, then this will be among the most spectacular failures of the Obama foreign policy. And we want to stop that from happening. And, and that's why this is getting all of this attention. Samantha Power yesterday said the USA would not allow Iran to attain a nuclear weapon, period. And the president put the likelihood of a deal coming to fruition at right about 50-50 um, and said in all likelihood that they're easier getting to know than they are yes, to paraphrase his words from his interview yesterday. Look, uh, Ronald Reagan walked away from, Mike, from Mikhail Gorbachev at, at a very unique time and made us stronger. I don't know if Barack Obama has, has that in him, um, but we, the last thing we want to do is get a bad deal that makes it more likely that Iran will get a nuclear weapon or that will trigger a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. This is, this is not a country that that is, is a democracy. This is not a country that respects individual rights. This is a country that has dedicated itself to wiping out another country that is the greatest sponsor of terrorism around the world. And so it does matter whether they get a bomb or get close to a bomb, and that's why we're all concerned about do, it. Do you think he needs to bring specifics today? Bibi Netanyahu yeah. or Barack Obama? Um, I think, I think, I want to hear what the Prime Minister, I've known Bibi, I don't know, 10 years. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what he has to say about the status of things. I want to hear um, just how big the consequences are of getting this wrong. We're critical of the administration's policy. We don't think he should have relaxed the sanctions and then go to talks. We can nickel and dime what the, what the administration did or didn't do. My fear is that the administration's policy is more of appeasement that leads to ultimately a nuclear Iran and a nuclear arms race in the Middle East, which is destabilizing not just for the region but for the world. Let's talk about topic number two. Supreme Court tomorrow is going to hear oral arguments on the subsidies that are going out to millions of right. Americans. You wrote a piece today in the Wall Street Journal, and in part, you write this. What we will propose is an off-ramp out of Obamacare toward patient-centered health care. It has two parts. First, make insurance more affordable by ending Washington mandates and giving choice back to states, individuals, and families. And second, support Americans in purchasing the coverage of their choosing. End quote. There's more in that piece, but you talk about escaping from mandated right. care. You need an alternative in case the Supreme Court says Correct. these subsidies That's right. are illegal. That's right. So what we put out today in, in this editorial in the Wall Street Journal is what our alternative looks like. They're entering into oral arguments tomorrow. Uh, they'll be making the decision in the next couple of months. We'll find out probably end of June whether or not the Supreme Court strikes this down. We believe any clear reading of the law shows that the Obama administration disregarded the law and, and forced 37 states uh, into accepting Obamacare when the law didn't allow them to have these subsidies. So the point is, no American should be penalized for the Obama administration's blatant disregard for the law. And we feel that we have an obligation to offer an alternative, to show an off-ramp out of Obamacare so that people can actually get affordable health insurance. Here's what Obamacare does. It, it takes away your ability to choose the plan that you want, 
it makes health insurance much, much more expensive. And then it takes money from hardworking taxpayers to subsidize it for some, leaving it more expensive for all. Um, and, l- and that's why we have to have an alternative that is a patient-centered alternative that gives people more choices and lower prices and better access. Quickly, in the last minute I have here. But your, the administration will call them subsidies. Under your plan, you call them tax credits. Yeah. Is so it the same thing? Not at all. Not at all. They're, they are subsidies, and they call them tax credits. They're, they're thinly veiled subsidies policed by the Internal Revenue Service. We are saying, and conservatives have been pushing this for a long time, give families and individuals tax credits to go toward their purchase of health insurance and let them decide what they want. Don't have the IRS police it. They're saying, buy the Washington mandated plan and the IRS will police how you buy that. We're saying, get rid of all of that. Give people freedom. You talk about a sane health care alternative. We'll see whether or not that's the case. Tomorrow, King versus Burwell, Supreme Court. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Paul Ryan with me here in Washington.